Sagan. Um, just wanted to do a quick intro to this video. So, as you probably noticed, there is no, uh, there was no Until Dawn playthrough on Twitch. I was really planning on doing that, um, but unfortunately we weren't able to get the PS4 uh, that I thought we were going to get uh, yesterday in order to do that. Um, same, same thing with today. So, uh, with any luck, we'll have it tomorrow and we'll be able to do that. Um, if we don't, we'll probably still do a Until Dawn play at some point. It just may not be during Shocktober officially. Um, but with that being said, here is the next segment of my uh, Shivers playthrough. And just assume that uh, when I refer to the last video, that is my hey, disastrous attempt at Fight Nights Freddy's 3, not the uh, Until Dawn teaser. So, yeah, with that being said, enjoy. Hey everyone, it's the Sagan from Scientists Say, and welcome to my next video for my Shivers playthrough for October 2016. Uh, so if you watched yeah, yesterday's video, um, I'm actually recording it shortly after that, and I'm still a little frazzled from having tried to play that game by myself, uh, in the dark, alone. <laughs> um, should not have done that. So, if I'm a little uh, disoriented as we start the next part of this playthrough, I do apologize for that. But, let's get, let's get started. Okay, so let's load up again. Select a name from the museum guest book. Okay, so yeah, as we were... Now I remember where we were last time. So we are about to go into the subterranean world. Um, if you didn't watch the last part or you've forgotten, uh, we were here in the Mysteries of the Deep Room. And I saw the puzzle of the Siren Song, which was the organ over here. Uh, had to play a song on that, managed to play the correct song, opened up the face of the Road of Colossus, and now we are able, if I can click on the right places, to enter the subterranean world. Okay. Uh-huh. Now, does this door look familiar to anybody? Well, if you've been watching the rest of my playthrough, it absolutely should. But, just for kicks, let's do a quick flashback. Care to refresh your memory? Life and legends of ancient sites around the world with your host, Sir Hubert Windelnot, Professor of Archaeology. Innumerable mysteries are raised as we look at the remains of the past. Who are these people who built these structures? Why did they have so much in What is that accent? Is that what the middle mid-Atlantic accent is supposed to be? To disappear and Just everybody talk like that, you know, 50 years ago. secrets beneath the earth? Archaeologists are only now piecing together the clues from pictographs and carvings left behind. Even so, we are far from understanding them. There is a legend. Of All right, now the story looks familiar. Running under the Andes Mountains in South America, connecting the Inca civilizations with a subterranean world. S searching for that passage, I followed this tunnel for almost a mile when all of a sudden it just stopped now i asked myself why would the builders of this tunnel go this far just to have it suddenly dead end? <coughs> come with me so explore its secrets you will see that the tunnel ends here now, notice the unusual markings on this end wall. Now, this is so clever. Watch as I touch the images. Okay. There. 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 And there. Now, pay close. 
close attention, this seems to be the key. So, that seems to be the solution we're looking for. <laughs> okay, so... Let's see it'll start... Here... 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 And here... And here... And here... Got it! Okay, so welcome to. Oh god, why did I do that? Closer. Welcome to the maze, people. I've already got myself lost by trying to turn around to show you the exit. Oh, fuck off, you! Apologies. I thought I closed that program before I got started. Wondering if I have any idea where I'm going? The answer is sort of. Uh, there is a trick to this, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. But even I have to remember what it is. Okay, and then I keep having. Uh, oh, I hit a dead end. Usually I get this right off, and unfortunately because I tried to give you guys a view behind me, which turns out to be exactly the same, which I did not know, I've now got myself a little lost. Looks like someone's a little lost. Okay, it looks like I actually found the reset point. Which means... Okay. Alright, let me reset here, guys. Okay. Help me. Even the music plays with you on this part to disorient you. One moment, all right? Okay, sorry, Meg. I was I was not looking at the solution. I was merely trying to find out is there any point in me going through here at the moment? Um, and I've determined that no, there is not uh, because there is a location at the end of this maze that unfortunately uh, requires you to be able to capture. Nixupi back there, and uh, because of that, uh, I do have his pot, but I don't have his talisman. Uh, so, we're going to skip the subterranean maze, I apologize for that. Uh, we will come back to it. For now, we need to find more vessels, uh, and with that in mind, I think it's time. Oh, sweet Jesus. The sand exipi or the crystal exipi is lurking nearby. I don't really want to find out. 
but it's the Santa Super. So let's get the fuck out of here. Okay, so I think we've done all we can do at the moment on the first floor. With that in mind, let's go ahead and head upstairs. Um, there is the, the clock tower door uh, in the theater hallway, but we have not found the solution for that, even though I know what it is. Uh, so I'm going to wait until we do. Okay, and... Uh, Crystal Xippy is lurking directly over my head, so I'm going to move. Alright, welcome to the... Well, what's this room called? I forgot. Much of what we know about early man comes from burial sites, That's but not burial. without a price. Burial rights. Eternal life was the sustaining ideology for many ancient cultures, and they went to great lengths to prevent their dead from being violated. Venture on if you will, but beware the curse of the tomb. Alright, before we continue on into the rest of this room, I want to note this area over here. It's the tomb of the Exupi. <coughs> Excuse me, the tomb of the Exupi. Uh, this talks about how the professor found the uh, pots and how they should never be opened. But, um, well, as you can plainly see, they've all been opened. Yes, if you count these all up, there are in fact 13. <clears throat> now you may ask yourself, well there's only 10, why is there 13? Well, we'll get to that a little bit later, Internet. So, let's look at this first. So here's another skull switch. Now we're in the burial rites room, I believe. Let's take a look Care at the to refresh your memory? brochure and see what we got. So we're actually at the Tomb of the Exupi exhibit, which is, of course, green. So... <laughs> I want to set this to green. It's set to blue right now. Now it's set to green. We'll leave it like that. Okay, so here we are. Various tombstones. We get the, you know, kind of a South American thing on feel over here where the tomb of the Exupi is. And notice the shell design carved, you know, casting a light. If uh, you remember the intro movie before the menu, go back to my first entry uh, for that. Uh, although it's a little on the small side, but go watch it. You'll see that we're actually rotating up and out through that room during that intro video. So that being said, very much an ancient Egyptian feel in this room. So here we have the Sphinx. Possessor of lost wisdom and guardian over the city of the dead, the Sphinx stands watch over the greatest tombs ever built, the pyramids. Search, and you may learn wisdom from these ancient lips. Now I just want to test one theory. Okay, so we can go back here. Now I've actually never been back here, believe it or not. In just a second, please. I'm sorry about that, Aaron. So, oh wretched soul <coughs> who disturbs this eternal rest may exist in despair for all eternity. Anubis, chief deity to whom prayers at an Egyptian burial were made, was the originator of embalming and funerary rites and used to invoke the curse of the tomb you are about to enter. Now, I believe the reason I've never actually been in here is because... Yeah... Basically, I can open this, and the cloth Xippy might be lurking inside, but... 
Okay. And that's it. It's basically a trap back here. If he was here, we'd get attacked. But he's not, so I'm fucking off out of here. Okay, let's get to the actual puzzle in this room. So here we have the Anubis. There's some stairs here. The heretics that lay beyond have driven out all of the gods save eight. So begins Egypt's decline. If thou art wise, thou shalt know that the names of this pharaoh and his queen be placed forever in shame on the columns of Ra. This guy had fun doing those voiceovers, that's all I'm saying. Okay. So we must place their names on the columns of Ra. So, well, we need a cartouche. And just so happens, Care to we have a book on cartouches. And they're talking about an ancient Egyptian pharaoh that drove out other deities except for the deity of Amun. Uh, they pronounced it Amun, but it should be Amun. Um, now, I myself am actually a fan of ancient Egyptian uh, mythology, so I know I knew who this pharaoh was. Anyway, uh, but we need the cartouche out of the book, as it is. And actually, our answer is right here on the very first page, after Man and Woman, of course. Uh, <clears throat> I always have trouble saying this. It's basically pronounced Akhenaten. Or, uh, uh, but uh, he tried to introduce, sorry, it's Aten, not, uh, or Aten, not uh, Amen. Thinking a different uh, situation there. Um, basically, this is Tutankhamun's father. Tried to uh, basically do away with all the other Egyptian gods, saying we only worship Aten, which is the sun god. Uh, that sort of didn't work. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's right. He changed his name. Uh, he was Amenhotep IV. Changed it to Akhenaten as part of his worship uh, to... Uh, be for awesome. Anyway, so we need his and we need his wife's, which is right here. So we've got kind of the feather and sun over a river with an eyeball, a crane, and then the sun and the river. <laughs> okay, so that. And that. And that. Okay. That's his name. Now we need his wife's. Which. Let me just consult the manual again. Care to refresh your memory? Okay, so we got like kind of an upside down female symbol. With the half moon and. Whatever that is, the two feathers and a woman fishing kind of thing. <laughs> Excuse me, Internet. I apologize for that, Internet. Okay. So we have that, that, and that. Opens up the sarcophagi, and inside we have another poppies. However, if we, uh, I believe we found the lid for this one. So if you remember uh, the symbols book, it's in one of the previous entries. It's the symbol for water. The dog is sitting on my hair. It's actually kind of cool because it's got like, uh, you know, kind of waves uh, at the bottom there. Okay, let's go. Now, I blanked out what, uh, we did find this one before. But I blanked out what it was when I mentioned it because I didn't want to spoil the fact that there are different elements at the time that I said it. Uh, I'm getting the fuck out of here because there's no soupy there. 
Okay, um, so to make a long story short, this is in fact the vessel for the water exhibit. Uh, and we found the lid for it over here in the workshop. It was that one that had like three sharks on it, and that just looked kind of badass. So let's go make us a pot, catch us an exupi. I think that's where we'll end this entry as well. So yep, here we go. Grab that, and boom, look at that. We now have a full vessel. It's fucking seamless. Uh, but actually, I think this is, you know, really badass looking. It's got like waves on the bottom, and like three sharks coming out the top. Pretty cool looking. All right, let's go find us an exupi. Now. Uh, there's an asterisk on this one anyway. I know one location he should show up. Um, the other location he might show up is in a completely different area of the museum, which we're not going to get to for a while. So, we might catch him here. Okay, well there's this little fountain over here. Which, interestingly enough, the head for this looks like the lid for one of the other jars we found. But not the water one. A little dial down here. Damn. Alright, I'm... I'm gonna try and force a capture here. I'm gonna leave the room, and I'm gonna come back now that that's running. Uh, but basically he can show up here uh, we can't, we could go down to the underground lake, but odds are he won't show up there. He's really only there, uh, for that first jump scare and attack in the game. Um, not regularly. Alright, come on, you little bastard. Oh, sweet, he's there. Alright, let's get him. Okay, so we approach, and... Attack him with his own vessel. Not close enough. Got him. And as you can see, we regained our life from when he attacked us earlier. Boom, and now we have our second Exupi captured. Ah, <sighs> that was, uh... That was satisfying. Okay. So, two down, eight to go. And yeah, we're gonna have to call this one, because this video has already run way longer than I intended. Um, so I'll end this one here. And I think... You know what? Just to get us started, or just to get us set up for next time. Oh, and you can see the Crystal Exupi's moved on. Alright. Just to get us ready for next time, I'm going to put us right here. We're going to get through this door and proceed into the next part of the museum. So I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. And uh, that was... This is part... Four... Part... It's part five <laughs> of my Shivers playthrough. Uh, I hope you, hope you all enjoyed, and uh, until next time, you stay classy, Aaron.